Can you join? See us? Are you there? What's going on? Hello? Paul, can you see us? Can you hear us? Hello? Can some Paul Is there can... a reflection on that light? No, oh, I think it's fine. Let me just have a look at my tag. We're a bit early, we're doing a little test. If you can see it on your screen, have you joined yet, Finger? Yeah. I think if Paul writes a comment, oh yeah, he likes. So I think we're doing okay. Oops, gone to a bit different. Let's see. I can change any of it. Okay. You are live. Tracy's here. Hello. Brit's here. Hi, Brit. Hi, everybody. Oh, so, a bit overcast today, unfortunately, here. You're behind on that. Pip's been cutting my hair, just so that you all know. So she's done a really good job. I was a bit worried when she cut off quite a bit. I was hairdresser for the day. I did everybody's hair, coloured and cut it for them. So we're all brand new now, we think. It's shiny like new. So except for me. Except for Pip. My arm, I wouldn't take that risk. Just use these guys. <laughs> she used me as a guinea pig, by the way. And even my dad had a go because he felt there was one bit that was too long. So even he took the scissors to my hair. So how trusting am I? So today I'm hoping, uh, we're a little bit early, but I'm hoping that everybody's getting their products together. And they've got their tag. Now the tag is about, so that anybody who is watching, is about six inches long and it's about four inches wide. And I've just cut the little snip, the little corners off. And I've also um, put a little hole in mine. But I do know that Dali Art, and I believe that um, Paul will be able to direct you in the right place. Um, we do have these tags available in whiteboard. So if you wanted something a bit more sturdier, you could do. But all I did was I took some cardboard and I actually cut it out just so that you can test you can do this project with me um, just in case you don't have the tag or have not bought the tag yet. So I'm going to wait until a few more people join. Did you want to go through what you have or did you already do that? Um, in, in terms of the tags I already have. Yeah. So a lot of you last week, if you joined us, would have seen that we've done some tags. So I'm just going through a few bits and you're not going to miss out if you're not online yet. So there we go. So you can see some really, really nice tags there. Let me bring that a bit closer to the camera. Can you see all the detail? Now this is what we're going to try and create today. So I'll take it very slowly. I'll uh, make sure that you can see everything, hopefully. Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, Pip has very kindly said that she'll manage the comments. Um, so that was one of them. Now, let's do the Shock Art Sisters. We all have different takes. So this was a different one. So you can see this is all about hope, especially at the moment. And this is much, much more cleaner, much less grungier, but still got a lot of journaling techniques and a lot of depth to it. Some beautiful, beautiful colors and some beautiful stenciling in the background. So you can just see that, yeah. There's that one. And then here we've got this beautiful um, tag which as you all know I did so you can see the depth on that and this is taking it one step further so I'm going to start you on the journey um, to do some tags so and then it's then as you um, get the techniques you'll be able to get to the doing more depth more color more vibrancy more your own style I suppose so you can see that that's a, that's a different one and kindly Pip who's very very um, creative um, took her take on it. She always likes brighter things than I do. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. It's again, lots of depth. 
And again, all of these have been created for things that we've got left from workshops, we've got left from previous projects, and so forth. I'm going to try and do a live streaming because what I'm finding is, is we're a little bit behind um, when we're doing it. So I'm just going to have a quick look at that as well, see if that makes any difference to us. So I think we're on the camera. I think we're going to have to stay there for now. Um, there we go. Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? No. Oh, I've got audio on. No. So I've been talking to myself all this time. No, no. I don't. I think they. No, they must be able to hear you. Maybe I think I can't hear you. Or maybe because I don't have my volume on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you good. Oh. Can we just chat with Paul? Everything's okay? Yeah, everything's good. Go back to your little life there. Oh yes, better go back. Stay on this so page. We've got a few people that are still gathering their stuff, so please don't start until 10. No, we will not start before 10. So all I've been doing is sharing some um, projects with you. So the whole idea of the, today was, was to give you some inspiration, to give you some techniques, to give you some yeah, 3D um, elements. Um, so all I've done is I've just got bits of, actually I've gone into Pip Stash, got some um, paper from a book. Um, I've even got, you know, the bits and pieces that you get. Look, I've got so much. From the back of your canvases, a few numbers. Oh look, a bit of mum's thread lying around. She knew I took it. Mm -mm. And there's a little pip in the background, which is not little really, is she? But there she is. Hi everybody, how are you doing? I hope you like, I'm changing professions now. I'm going to become a hairdresser. See? How's that's, everybody that's doing? Um, it's about here. I just want to say thank you for all the digital downloads for my journal through India um very kind um for those of you who um have a smaller print or a smaller capacity we do have the bundle package too that has lots of different sizes yes. right yes six by sixes a four for your journaling yeah and a six toppers a six toppers now didn't you release some stamps i have to put them on my website yeah i'm a bit slow a little bit behind because i was busy cutting mm. hair so um so we've released three of our first digi stamps that we've done um so i just want you to show you a, a few of the things i've done with them i'm really pleased with how they've come out i'm pleased too they look lovely my bangs need cutting as you can see i couldn't give myself a haircut they're so long now look. Mm. okay we're going on to oh our that's right we're doing our digi stamps. stamps so this is the first digi stamp so you can just see it's a butterfly with script and with a bit of few of my splodges. How did you colour that in? So I've used the Kurotaki pens, the autumn or the summer range, oh. which I know Paul has put on the site. And in fact, if you're quick, you can buy the pens for $24.99, 12 of them, the brush pens plus the, the finer tips, plus you get three of these digi stamps free. Oh. Very so nice. same same stamp or same image. Oh, sorry, done in a totally different way. So it's the same digi stamp, but so, you've just done different things to it. Yeah. So so and far, you've got a few, don't you? Yeah. Maybe you're better at holding them in the camera. You could be my little assistant. Yeah, I can be your assistant. So this is the exact same stamp. This is version one. Color. This is also. Kurataki, I'm yeah, not sure the how Kurataki, you say Yeah, Kurataki um, pens, brush That's markers, one. they're alcohol, and the vibrancy of colour is just absolutely Same. amazing. This is such an easy technique to do. You just take the brush pen, you just basically colour the back of the paper that you've printed in black and white. And then what you do is, is you come in with the same colour pen and just darken all the areas. It's such an easy technique, but just look at the effect. And then I've drawn some circles onto it. And then you only use like three colours on this, I think. Yeah, just an orange, uh, a slightly a green and a, uh, and a darker orange tone. 
the yellow, sorry. And then it looks colors. like you went with the autumn Kuratakis on this yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. Can you believe that? That's deep, the same yeah. stamp. Three ways. Three different ways. Three ways. What else you got there, kiddo? So the other one we did was this one, which is from my journal book. I knew yeah, some of like you. This so this is a really beautiful one. And again, I've used the summer colors here, the brightness of those colors. And that's all I've used. Again, three oh, colors wow. to create this beautiful, um, uh, I suppose, like a journal page, really. They're really, yeah. You can, when you download them, you can use them in your journal pages. What else you got, girl? So the same one, I've printed it onto A4. And so now I've got this really beautiful. You can see page. through it. it. She's actually done it just when we practice on copy of paper and the Kurotechis come through. I don't know if you can see the detail. She's gone in with like a white gel pen or a Posca pen and she's just highlighted the areas. I love this. So this is a great journal cover. Um, look at Obviously, those. Yeah. The and detail you could even stick there. this onto a cardboard. You could put this onto the front of your... I would put it, put it on a journal yeah. and then bind it. Mm, that's that's what idea. I would do. That's great. So you can do that with any of the Digi stamps. And then this is our third one. My mum's coloured this one because she's, she just wanted to colour it. It was her birthday yesterday, so it's like a card to herself. <laughs> well, yeah, she made a card to herself. <laughs> so, and oh. the, the Digi stamps have been done in an A5. So you can see this is the third one in the range. So hopefully that will give you some inspiration. What about... Those ones. Okay, she wants to show the ones we haven't released yet. We haven't released them yet, but she's been working on them. So you have them here though? We do have them here. We I created her the other day. So I just wanted to show you where, what I'm thinking. So here she goes. There she is. So this is a journal. This is going to become oh, a journal cover. Or it can be a journal page. So she's created and coloured with the Kurataki pens again. So she's my beautiful girl. So I've been doing she, the flowers as well, so that you've got flowers. Oops. So she's like add. the whimsical kind of journal pages you get, right? Yeah, but the vibrancy of them. And then I've got the flowers, which I've just started to create as well. I've just drawn this yesterday. So, woo, so that yeah. will match. So if you want to, what I'll be doing is, is I'll be giving you some of all of these bits and pieces so that you can actually um start to build your own journal pages and then this is another take on it with the autumn colors so ones with the summer colors and ones with the autumn colors so this hasn't gone to the next level in terms of the <laughs> it's white a work in progress. progress so just to show you they look absolutely beautiful and um pip's been working on a red box haven't you and it looks amazing yeah, I, do, I have i will post pictures soon i told yeah. the girls um i haven't got to play in the craft room for the last day yesterday yeah. and I'm going to go play and finish up my box and then I'll post some pictures and it's this beautiful red box and it's going to have the journal through India papers um, on top of it. That's it. And Are I'm, you showing that 3D box you've just finished doing? The, have you glued all that together? It's yeah. not really glued together but I can go bring it. Okay, because I think it's really nice, but especially at the moment when we're all trying to sort out our craft rooms. It's my desk organiser. So it's her desk organiser but we all want it. I'm going to be doing one with the um, Dream of Magic. I've got a whole project which I will probably put onto YouTube. I have to work on it. So here she comes. I absolutely love this. So this is just it's not glued, so I've got to be a little bit gentle. So it looks like this. So and I use my papers on it, the journal through India. And it's like a little desk organizer, but I was thinking you could even stand it up like this on yeah. its base and fill it up with all kinds of little things. But it's quite deep inside. It's beautiful. And then on the back, it's got the little elephant from the digital papers. And you've done nothing else to these papers, have you? No, nope. I've just put the papers on, and then the inside I um, painted with magenta lazor. Magenta lazor, so it's a wood stain. Um, in fact, the box that I'm doing is the red lizard. But yeah, this is going to be my little desk organizer. I hope you guys like it. I will um, post pictures up soon. It's beautiful. I love it well, because you haven't you. had to do anything else to those papers. Oh, it's so, big. so you can digitally download those. So they're available to you straight away. 
and you've got a bundle there and thank you for all of those who have bought the bundle um, where you can actually have some A6 toppers and A4s and okay, 6x6s so we're just going to have a look at the time so we should be really starting it is 10 o'clock <gasps> so I hope you're all here I always forget which way this goes so let's do oops no look what she's done to her hair now just made the right mess of it because the camera is always the opposite. It's a bit like being in a mirror. Look what I'm doing. I'm making the right mess. Oh, God. See? No hand hand coordination. So this is this way. I'll have to get my sis into action. See, I've done it again. Oh, sis, I'm making the right mess of my hair. Look. So can you put it right, please? No, I didn't ask Oh, you yes. Anything. Let hairdresser... Oh, I no, called it start. Pip's Parlour. And they had to actually make yes, appointments. Yes. I made them make appointments. So we had like a 3 o'clock. And then we had like a 3.30. And then one was getting coloured. While their were, hair was getting all percolated, the other one came in, coloured their hair, went and washed this one. I actually gave them a wash and everything with like I a, didn't get a, a spray on. thing out, the laundry thing dried it and then I actually did curls on my other sister and then I straightened this one so that was the other day but they did she washed it today didn't you I did so yeah they got the full treatment right so thank you very much for all of those that are joining us ready to go we're ready to go um it looks like we have a different setup on Facebook for some reason I think Facebook have changed a few things because my screen is different to what it was previously um, so here we go. So what I asked was is if you all got a tag and whether you cut it out for cereal box or some cardboard or if you had already a made tag. I know we've got them on Dali Art in the whiteboard so you could have used that or you could use whatever you want but I'm actually going to go with a bit of cardboard and I've already cut my tag out. So that's our starting point. Know what size it is. A lot of people are asking. Okay so I've gone with box. six spot inches by four. But really, it doesn't matter if you go for a big tag or a small tag. It really matters how much embellishments you've got or bits and pieces from the house. So obviously, if you want to go for something smaller, you could go like an ATC even and use these techniques. If you want to go for something a bit bigger, then use something bigger. But remember, the bigger your tag, the more you need to actually add on. The embellishments the longer it will take you the longer it will take you to layer it so that's the difference so you could have something which has got a lot less layers like this one yeah or you could go for something like this which is what we're going to try and do today which has got a little bit more layering on it yeah and some depth on hi, it Gail. Hi, Terry. hi everybody and or then you get to the next level where you start to build them up but these are all exactly the same size yeah, tags slow down when you're showing things oh yeah. sorry sorry i think he was talking to me Probably. there we go so that's one of the tags that it's got a lot of detail but today we're going to be looking at something in between so hopefully to get to something like this so can you see that so that's good Right, let me get started. What's that? What's I've got that? a quick disclaimer. So we're not in our workshop and we haven't been in there when we've done the Facebook Lives simply because we are waiting to get lighting and proper camera equipment. Um, with COVID-19, we're not getting everything obviously on time. So our parcels are stuck somewhere or they're being processed. So in the meantime, we're actually out in the games room. If you watch a Facebook Live last week, you would know we gave you a little tour. So there's three other gremlins in the house. So if you hear people walking around or talking, just ignore it. It's because we've taken Sally over thanks. the main entertainment room in the house. So yeah, mm -hmm. just don't worry about them. If you hear screaming or- uh, That's just Pip. Yeah, that's know. just me uh, being silly, okay? So just wanted to say that. Okay, off you go, kiddo. All right then. So I'm going to... Slow down. Slow down. Oh, I could do with a mat, couldn't I? So I was going to ruin your surface. Uh, I forgot to get that. Map. Yeah, craft map. Oh, she's so good to me. So I'm just going to put craft map down. While she's getting that, what I've done is I found bits lying around. Literally bits, bit of thread. Some of these, I know you all will recognise these. 
the little backs on the canvases. I use these so much. Bit of numbers going on there. I've even got an old, you know, one of our texture moulds, which I absolutely love for some of the detail. I mean, it just goes on a bit of a die cut of paper. So you can just go to town. I've got a little bit of a spoon, a bit of cheesecloth. So you can see all these bits and pieces. And when you're showing stuff. Just to slow down when you're showing stuff. I'm putting stuff. a note up on her laptop to slow down when she's showing stuff. And here's your map. Oh, yeah, thank you, darling. So if you have any comments or questions, I'm right behind Dali, and I'll be typing away. So just shoot questions, whatever, comments, or anything that you need to know, or anything, anything. Okay, so if you are going to be using your glue gun, make sure that's on. If you're going to be using your heat gun, make sure you've got that plugged in. Make sure you've got copper. Make sure you've got your primer. So I'm going to just go through very, very um, quickly the products I'm going to be using. So first, you need a tag. Okay, just a plain bit of cardboard. So even if you've got, even if you've just got a cardboard A4 sheet lying around, you can still do this technique. So you don't need to worry too much. That was the whole idea of today. Okay. Then what I've done is I've literally raided and found as much as I can, whether it's a bit of reading pages, whether it's a little bit of flowers, whether it's just a die cut lying around that we've been using, whatever it is, I've just basically bundled it into a box so I can use that. Okay, so the next thing that you need to make sure you do have, and this is this is not, uh, this is essential to this project, is you do need a primer. So let me just hold that up so it's not in the light. Okay, so you do need this a primer, whether it's gesso or it's primer paste by Pentart, which I love because it's much thicker and quicker coverage. So you do need some sort of primer. Worse comes to worse, if you've got a white acrylic paint, you can use that. But be careful because that might have a glossy or a semi-glossy or oils in it. So you do need to be careful. Okay, so now this is not something that is essential, but it does make for nice texture. Is you can actually use a stencil. So I've got the Pip Art stencil, which is one of our favorites and go-tos. And what I'm going to use it with is modeling light. So again, you can use this with whatever um, paste you like. So we want something that's quite quick drying, but gives us some um, depth on our project. So that's where we, that's one of the items. It's not essential, but it's nice to have. Now, the next bit is I did ask you whether you had three colors in medium mists or sprays, or you had three acrylics. So what I'm going to actually work with is three misters. Now, I really like, the fabric misters and the media misters from Pentar. So I'm going to be using the fabric mister in blue. I'm going to be using the fabric mister in yellow. These are, these are the two main colours I've chosen to do this project in. Okay, and then my third, which is the Lazor, look at it, it's beautiful, it's been used, the Lazor in magenta. This is going to give me that pop of colour I'm looking for. Okay, so the next thing is my trusted friend is my gold metallic wax, which is the metal gold, again by Pentar. Absolutely beautiful. I use this nearly on all my projects. Okay, and then the final thing, and again, this is not essential, but if you wanted to put another colour in, I'm just using, this is like the um, pearl white. It'll just give it, a sort of a beautiful pleasant look and it really does highlight some of the areas so I'm going to be using that. So that is all my products. So basically primer essential, sprays or acrylic paints essential, bit of gold wax nice to have, not an essential but for me I love it. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is as we mentioned is I'm going to take my tag so let me move my computer down to 
So I'm hoping you've got a really nice image there. Let me make that a little bit higher. There we go. So you can all see what I am doing. If I think you can see what I'm doing, is that okay? Hi, yeah, I'm coming. I'm just getting you some supplies. I'm getting you a box to spray into. Okay. So you don't spray all over everywhere. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my tag, I'm taking my spatula, and I'm taking a little bit of the modeling light. Can you see that okay, Pip? Yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. We're lagging a little bit. Behind. Okay. Because so, um, we're going to try this on Zoom next time, aren't we? Yeah. So, yeah, looking good. Looking good? Looking perfect. Okay, so I'm going to just put that through just a little bit. Not too much. Just a little area. So one area there. And I'm going to do a little bit over here. So not a lot. So did you primer your tag already? I didn't actually primer my tag. So did you want to wait for everybody because you've asked them to primer it? Um, I didn't ask anyone to primer. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, you have to tell them they need to primer their tag first. Didn't Were they supposed to or not? They can if they want to, but they don't have to. Well, you might want to wait for them. If okay, if, they're prim if you're primering your tag, then please go ahead and I'll dry this in the meantime. So, I haven't primed mine because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the stenciling first. And then I'm going to start. You can do it both ways. It's really a up to you. Obviously, if you're using a porous tag, you might want to primer it. Or if your cardboard is brown. Yeah, you might want to primer it. So maybe we'll just wait here because I think we're going to try to catch it. Okay. So, there we go. So I'm just finishing off. Oh, I've got. No, okay, we're going to just stop here. Yeah. Um, so people are confused now because of the, the primer and then doing this modeling phase. So we're going to stop here. Everybody just primer their tags in white and dry mm -hmm. them. Okay. Um, so maybe talk to them and let them know. Okay, so if any of you want to primer your tag, then please go ahead and primer it. And... I sometimes do and I don't always primer my tags because obviously you get different effects each time you do it. I quite like the texture behind because in fact what we're going to be doing is we're going to be ripping the cardboard back anyway and then I'm going to be primering over the top. So, so I'm just cleaning my hands. Sorry if I've confused anybody. I've confused Pip more than anybody else. <laughs> no, I'm reading the messages. Mm. <laughs> okay. Because we still have to rip the cardboard back here. Yeah. Then we plan after that. Oh, okay then. So, okay. That's so why. I think the confusion happened because yeah. you said it was so important to have the white primer. because you need to white primer everything at the end. So I'm just, I'm being good while you're all priming your tags. I'm just wiping my stencil, or oh, stencil. <laughs> so it's all nice and sparkly. Okay, so when you've all primed it and dried it, I mean, this is something, if you choose to do it, mm. then you can. Um, so it's really up to yourselves, because obviously it depends on the background you're using. I mean, you might be using an old canvas, you might be using a, a very, um, just a piece of card. So obviously, if you want the colors to take, this is one way of doing it. However, I prefer to put my stencil down first, because what I'm going to do is dry this and then I'm going to start ripping this cardboard back. So if I'd already primed this, yeah, it make sense. then you would be ripping that primer back off again. So the idea here is, is that I stencil and then I rip back some of this cardboard, but you may not have the same sort of corrugated cardboard tag as I do. So you may not be able to do that, but that doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're going to add texture on texture anyway and layer on layer, so that's fine. 
There's no right or wrong. That's what she's saying. Yo. Sorry if I confused anybody. No. Obviously, my brain works faster than my hands do, or my hands work faster so, than my brain. So, questions. Um, yes. Paul is asking, what are the advantages of priming? I think you just kind of explained that, though, didn't you? Primer yeah. stops any kind of what paint sprays, any kind of paste seeping through your cardboard piece. Is that right, Dali? Yeah, so it gives you, that's right, exactly right. So there's two two things that the primer does, or gesso does and primer does is, one, it gives you a really good smooth surface. It gives you the same color tone to work on. I think if any of us who wear makeup, it's like a foundation. Ooh, so fun. if you don't put this on, you will not have a smooth base to work with on some occasions. If you also want to add color and you've got different tones within your background card or your your image then you're gonna the colors gonna pick up very very differently so the sprays will not be as vibrant so if you would think about it adding something to white is much more vibrant than adding it to a gray board or an MDF piece so this way it gives you the best of both worlds now if you don't use it you will still create an effect It'll just be a different effect. If you've got something very porous, then you're going to absorb all that into the background and it's going to dull your piece of art. That's why we do the transparent primer. So if you want to keep the colors that are vibrant from say, like something like Journal Through India, you want to keep the papers, but you want to add more techniques to the top, then you can do that by adding a transparent primer. Whereas a primer, which is either white or black, it tends to be added either as a base, but we're also going to be using the primer to cover all the elements that we're going to be adding on as well. So I'm hoping that you've all caught up. I'm asking for the Paul says he only wears makeup on the weekend, so he's not too familiar with lots of primer products. Oh, bless him. <laughs> bless him. I thought he always looked better at the weekends. So I'm hoping that you've all dried your tags if you yeah. have used primer. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to dry my tag. And not talk. <laughs> and not talk, as I've been told. These are all my, do you know what? I've got two teachers. I've got my sister. I've got some light reflection coming got from Paul. somewhere. I've got Paul. But we would never steer you wrong, sweetheart. No, this is true. So, if any of you have just been busy primering and busy drying, what I've done is I've just taken a stencil, taken some modeling paste, light in my case Woo, where's my camera gone modeling paste light and basically gone through that through the stencil um and then i don't know if you can catch that there you go you can see where i've got that so all i'm going to do is give that a quick dry So I'll wait for anybody who's stenciling at the moment. Now the next bit may not apply to all of you because you may not have what I call like a layered uh, corrugated card. So I'm just going to work on this and then I can show you exactly what I've been doing because you may have a piece of paper, you may have uh, some board. So let me just start to tear this away while you're doing working on that. And I'll show oh, you. What's that? Might be an email coming through, sis. So all I'm doing is just tearing a little bit away. But don't worry if you do not have this sort of cardboard. It's a bit of a light reflection. Thank you. So we are looking at going to Zoom, which is another technology, which means that you can all actually talk to us, which makes it a little bit easier. And we see everybody too. And we see everybody. And, and you see us. And then we can see the progress and go along that way too, right? Yeah, because this is a little bit hard because I can't see where you're getting to. Whereas if you were in a workshop, so it's like a virtual workshop, you'll be 
basically I'll be teaching you like you would so as if you were in a, a say on Skype or on so something an online like that. Classroom, yeah, it? it's an online classroom. So we're going to be setting that up. We're going to be sending the instructions out. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. So all I've been doing while you've been probably drying and pasting is I've been ripping back some of those bits. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. All that's doing is giving me some texture on this tag. Nothing more than that. Now. Because I've done that, I'm going to quickly primer all this while you're doing your stenciling. It's okay, we've got lots of comments, people get easily confused as Oh, thank you. It's not your fault. Oh, no, it's all right. It's my first time actually doing a step-by-step -step sort of in this yeah. style. I mean, you know, it's, I sort of want everyone to keep up. So all I'm doing is I'm just putting the primer, I'm putting it over the stenciled bit. I'm putting it over my bits where I've got the corrugated card lifted. This, there's no reason, there's nothing to do this is like perfection. It's just more to give me a background so I can work on it. Because I'm going to be sticking a lot of stuff on this. So hopefully you're all with me. So I'll just show you what I've done. Pushing water. So Paul's asking you, ripping it back to make it vintage. Or basically, I think we're ripping it back to, to create lots of texturing. Yeah, and you can create a vintage effect like this as well, I suppose. So all I've done is just given it a very light coat of the primer, because obviously the Pentart primer is very, very thick. Now, while you're all getting to that stage, you may have already primed, you may have already stenciled. Um, I'm just going to give that a quick dry. Okay, so I've given that a quick dry. Now this is where the fun begins. So once you've done that, you've just got a little bit of stenciling on that, a little bit of primer on that. This is where I really love to go to town. So I've got some book pages, which I'm sure most of you have probably got lying around. And I'm just going to tear this randomly. Don't think about it. The more you think about it, the worse it becomes. So, and at this moment, all I'm doing is I'm just looking for ideas in my head. We can take this all off, start again. So I don't like that straight edge there. So, so would you stick it down at the end then? Yeah, definitely. Definitely stick it at the end. So with the beauty of phones and everything, you can really go back and have a look. So I'm not doing anything special. I'm just tearing up little bits of paper and just going for it. It's looking good. Thank you. Yeah, good. I Thank mean, you. you don't have much down yet, but just even that modeling piece. Yeah, just little bits. So, so that's where I'm going to start. That's where I'm starting at the moment. So, what the whole idea of this is layers. Now, it's not always easy to see layers for a lot of people because they're thinking, how am I ever going to get it to that level where it's so raised? So, the next thing I do is either get some cardboard if you've got some cardboard, and I'm just looking for my other bits. Um, I've got some here, sis. So you can either, I'll show you the technique I sometimes use just to cheat. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. So just take some cardboard. And what you can start to do is just keep tearing that. This is how you can add a height. So what you start to do is you start to build that within your project. And I quite like the fact that these have all got different textures to it. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, and you all will have these, I know what you like. You've got these little wooden pieces from your, your tags, and some of you from your canvases. So you can again put these at different stages, different parts. So this is how you start to build. You know, you always think, oh God, they've got it raised. How do they do that? So these are the little bits that you can do. Now we've got a die cut that I know we use a lot. And again, that's gonna be sort of my focal point. 
so I'm going to be sticking that not you know I'm still working on this so I've got a few numbers wooden numbers lying around just take your time get your little bits out don't rush it just take your time so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put some numbers here I'll put the number 18 and some, oh, my birthday. That's Pip's birthday. So I'm going to put 18. Lots of times I do odd numbers. And you know, earlier I had this sort of die cut we've been using. This is the Doily Dreams die cut, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm actually going to tuck it. Don't worry, it's got a different colour. We're painting everything white. So I'm just tucking it behind there. So can you see where we're getting to with all that already? So very quickly, I'm going to be ripping some of that texture mould. Let me take this part so I can use some of that as well. So basically, everything you've got lying around, doesn't matter if it's a bit of sequences, a bit of cardboard, a bit of texture paste, I'm actually going to put that, take that bit, and just put that down at the bottom. Again, this is all about adding layers. Got that thread, you remember that thread? I'm going to be putting that down as well. So you can carry on, you can keep adding to this. Oh, look, I found a little bit of foam or some sort of branch thing. So let's put that down there. So this is all about layering. Now I've got some of these, which is just the old pieces of the MDF. And again, I can put that down. Maybe I will add that. So this is where you can start to say, well, actually, I don't like that bit. I prefer this bit. Looks great, Ali. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, the video's very clear too. Oh, the project looks great. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, it's looking really good. Thank very you. Very clear. Excellent. So let me ooh, numbers again, walkies. Let me put the eighteen there again. So I wanted to put that little bit in there because again, it's all about adding texture. Maybe I need to build this now out of here. So don't worry about it. This is your tag. And if you don't do this, you'll never, you will know when it's right for you. Not anyone else, just you. So I'm going to put that over there. So I've put quite a bit, few bits on there. Not loads, but a few. Got some cheesecloth here if I wanted to add that. So I've got a few other bits here that looks very kindly. I've nicked. Doesn't even know about. I don't think. Do you need some? Oh. <laughs> no, I've got quite a few going on here, sis. I have. So, you know, got a little bit of, let's put a little bit of love here. 18 love, whatever that means. Don't know. It's been tough with everybody I know. We're all, you know, cooped inside. But, you know, this is the sort of things that we should be doing together. And the more I can bring you to do together, uh, the more happier it makes us. So, again, we've got a little flower here. So, I don't know how that's looking. I'm hoping that's looking it's nice. Looking brilliant. From brilliant. Where I'm sitting. So hopefully everybody's liking it. So again, you know, we've got a little bit of a, maybe something here that will go there. I haven't taken it even off its cover yet. So I've got a little key. Now, you know, I'm quite happy with what I've got here. Um, you might want to add a little bit more depth here. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can either create this where I've actually covered the whole tag or you could just take all of this away on this side. And thank you, sis. Take all of the way on this side and just leave that side. See? And then you would have a tag which is more heavier on this side but less on this side. And then you could put something like, oh, all I've done is stamped a word and just put the word, oops, word journey there. Then you move the whole table, didn't I? So that's one way of doing it. Oh, it's beautiful. So you've got an idea of that's where we're going with it. But I'm actually going to do it all because I actually like that look. I do too. So I'm going to cover it all, but this is one way of doing it. So if you want to keep it a bit more vintage, don't go in with dark colours. Go in with light, so I'll hold it still. Go in with light, dark. Yeah, you can pick that lot up. Now I've got a little bottle here if you want to put a little bottle on it. You can go to town on this. I'm going to leave it today for that bit where I'm going with my embellishments. Because obviously, otherwise, we'll be here all night. Sometimes less is more, too. Yeah. Exactly. So take them all off. How do you remember where you have them? I just <laughs> I just redo it. In, it doesn't have to be exact for me, but I know for some people like it me. does be does need to be exact. 
I might use that bit of stuff. I take photos as I go along. That's a good idea. I do. I just take yeah. pictures so I know where I'm going with it. Okay. Now, again, there's two ways to do this. I do it both ways. So, just to let you know, is you can start painting everything first. So, if your gesso isn't a paste or isn't that strong, I advise that you paint it first. This way, you can get into all the nooks and crannies. That's one way of doing it. Or you glue it all down and then you paint it all. It really is up to yourselves. So I'm going to do it where I'm going to paint it all first this occasion. And I'm going to do it quite watered down. It doesn't need to be really thick because you're going to stick it down and then you're going to paint it again. Now I'm going to let you all get on with that. So start painting all your pieces and I'll be painting mine. So everything with white gesso? Yeah. Every everything. single piece? Yeah, every single piece. Unless it's something like this one, um, you don't need to. Okay. I would leave that one, only purely because that's already sort of got a coating of its own. But say if you wanted, I'm not going to do my um, pages. I'm going to leave my pages because I want that, oh, sorry, I want that writing to show through. So you might want to say, well, actually, I want to pick a few things out of here, which I don't want to cover at all. So I might leave my I might leave my little die cut. So even though it's got a bit of colour on, I'm not worried. And you don't need to do both sides, mm -hmm. but if you wanted to, you could just in case you felt, you know, especially with this brown piece, it's very very dark um, in comparison to the rest of the project. But I quite like the fact that the different shades. I don't need it to be stark. So all I'm doing is quite boring. I'm just colouring these. But I'm sure you can catch up with me as well. And this is something you can watch now. We'll we'll it'll be live. Um live. It'll be whoops, my little eights decided to walk his it's it'll be available. So don't worry if you're not keeping up. I'm hoping that you all are. Yeah, no, nice thing is that they can you know or even we can rewatch it. Yeah. And we can improve from this. You can tell us what you want in the future, but this is really me showing you what you can do with products you've got at home, products you can buy from obviously um, the website. So, you know, it's not always about what you need to buy new. We've got a lot of stash, but it is nice when you see something and you think I want to create that. So if anybody wants kits in a steampunk form or a floral form, yeah, then just let us know. We can always come up with something. So I'm going to leave my little gabichon as well. My little log sign, not a lot, because it's quite light anyway. And you like, see, Daddy's not like giving it like making it solid, solid white. She's just giving it a good primer coat, right? Exactly. So I'm going to take this off. The and that's why she's going like super fast. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry. Yeah. If you're thinking, oh my god, she's giving it a really good coat. So even with the string, I'm just going in and I'm just picking up bits. I quite like this colouring technique. A lot of people want it to be black or um, white. And that's okay too, because we're all different. But for me, I'm a very different style. So Pip would have probably done this to... Probably to, like two coats. <laughs> yeah, she probably would have done about two maybe even three I think. so again don't worry just a little bit on everything and that's all we're doing so now I've nearly finished coating all mine don't worry if you haven't no worries at all and I'm going to give this all a little blast just so that it's easier to stick down I'm going to use the glue gun for convenience I would say use a heavy body jar um, if you have it in the future um, so just so that things stay down now make sure you put quite a lot of glue going or glue on because otherwise when we start to colour over it um, it will be a bit of a problem. I'm just going to go over this piece a little bit more because it's the brownest in my set. It's Paul's birthday on Saturday. Yeah, it's come around. We, do you know, we nearly forgot with the Covid virus, do you know, we nearly forgot our mum's birthday because it's just been so difficult to remember dates, hasn't it? Yeah. We're just not used to it. So, there we go. I've already sort of coloured all mine, and I'm going to be colouring over the top anyway. So, I'm going to blast all that with a heat gun. Swipe the middle of my The numbers are escaping me as I'm speaking. Um, so, 
It is difficult. But happy birthday, Paul, for Saturday. Sorry we can't be there to share it with you. And enjoy a nice barbecue. Yeah, he always has a barbecue on his birthday. But not this year. But do you know when, when this is all over, we will enjoy and we will make most of the time we have. And probably, like me, most of us have taken for granted. So while you're all doing that, I'm cleaning my mat to death by the looks of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the heat gun and blast those. Hi guys, so hello mama. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you on the tag of how to add all this in. So there we go. So we've got all our bits and what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to just start, you know Pip was saying how do you remember. So I'm just going to start random. I don't overthink it and I think that's the magic of what I I think to doing mixed media is sometimes is not to overthink it. We're not matting and laying here. We're not doing precision here. What we're doing is, is creating a really beautiful piece of art which is a representation of how you may be feeling or how you may want to do something. So let's go for it. So I'm going to start off with my little pages. Let's stick those down. I'm hoping that you've all caught up. If not, this is what we're doing. So all of you will have little embellishments, big embellishments. Some of you might be doing bigger tags. Some of you might be doing littler tags. So I'm just going in with the paper and just quickly putting that down for us. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope, I know in the UK it's a lot worse from what I hear. Um, I know in Canada we're sort of stuck in a bubble, um, but it does feel really surreal still. So I don't know when we're going to get over that feeling. And it's hard. It's hard being stuck indoors all the time. But we are getting there. Things are, you know, hopefully improving with us all, you know, sticking to the rules. I hope you're all doing all your sticking down now. So you can see, look, mine isn't that white, so I'm not worried about that, <laughs> as you can see. So thank you, sis. So I'm actually going to keep that one this way. So again, don't worry, this is just a bit of cardboard, it's a bit of a tag, it's a bit of things that have been lying around in your studio, your craft room, your bedroom, and you're just thinking, oh, what should I do with those? So I'm not. I'm just going for it. I'm not even thinking where it's going. I'm just going. I know that this will be a little representation of what I like. So I'm not following exactly where I put it before, but it's all good. How are we doing? Comment we're going too fast. Oh, okay. But like we said, this is something you can rewind. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll recap for everybody who might have joined us. So first we took the tag, so I can slow down a little bit for everybody. We took the tag, we put a little bit of, and it was personal, you can either primer it or you don't have to at this stage. Then I did some stenciling in light modelling paste. Then I tore back some of the edges on my cardboard because I could because it was corrugated. And then what I've done is I've primed it all, just a gentle primer, and then I found objects from around the house or in my craft room and I've started priming them all of them and sticking them down. You can have a rough idea of how you want them to be. So, so it's not difficult to hopefully get to that stage now. So there we are. So that's where I'm at, at the moment. So I'm working my way just on how to stick these down. I'm hoping that you're keeping up. 
And if not, like uh, Pip says, we are actually recording all this. So you will be able to go back and we'll put it onto YouTube for you as well. Yeah. So that you can see it. And Janet's got a great, she's, she was saying that she always finds it better watching it first and then you can do the project later. Exactly. Which is a really good way of doing it too. Yeah, for sure. So all I'm doing is I'm putting this little little um, embellishments in. There's no no rights or wrongs. It's just what you want to make of it. So don't worry about that. So all we're trying to do here is is give us give us all an idea of something which is a little bit different. Okay. So this is where I've got to. Let me put my number one. Is that yeah, that's mummy, I think. <laughs> so these are just lovely little pieces to do. And again, you can take your time at home and do these. I just find it so therapeutic. Um, I love, love doing these pieces. And I'm not overthinking it. Yeah, you're really good like that. I, I think that's what my... So, um, downfall is I overthink my projects, whereas you just kind of go for it, and they always turn out so amazing. I, I just, I'm scared oh, thank if I you. go for it, there'll be a big mushy mess. No, like you say, it's just, it's just so nice to be able to put something together. I mean, I've changed this from where we started. Um, you know, I've gone through it and I'm thinking, oh, I like that, but I don't like that bit, or I like that bit. So, you know, again, don't worry about that. There's no, like, rights or wrongs for that. I don't want a bit of texture in here, so I'm just going to throw this in. So, you know, it's your style, and if you're just starting, just watch the video back again, and you'll see that this is something you can do. And this is really the technique that a lot of us mixed media specialists or mixed media artists use to create these type of tags. And each time you do it, it will be different. So I'm going to glue that down a little bit more there. So this is where whoops, this is where I've got to so far. So you can see, look at that already building layers. It's already fantastic. Thank you. And it doesn't look like much when you're at this stage, but as you get further and further into it, it starts to really, really build up. So let's stick, try and stick him into there. Let's put my next glue stick in. So, and sometimes you might find like, oh, well, do you know, I wish I'd put that piece underneath or something like that. And you know, when that happens, it happens a lot. So, let me put my... Oh, Danny looks lovely. Ooh. Oops. Throw my glue stick around. Yeah, thank you, sis. Because I'm um, way lag behind, so now you would, in, in my feed, you were just lifting it up. Ooh, that's good. So I'll show that for a bit while everybody's catching up. So don't worry too much about the perfection of this either. Because once time, once, once time, once you've coloured it, and you've done all your bits on it, you'll notice that actually it's it's really nice. I'm gonna put a little bit more texture up here. And again, it's nothing to worry about. So I might even leave that piece for now. I like string in my projects, and you'll notice that a lot. So I might even today take it across the middle, which I rarely do, always take it from the top. And I'm just going to tie that at the back. Again, you don't have to do this. It's something else I like. I just like texture. So I quite like that texture in there. So can you see that now? This is where I've got to. Again, you can cut those bits off or you can keep those on. Okay, I'm going to take it slowly. So that's where we've got to. Now, hopefully you've all caught up or you're nearly there. So let's have a look where we're going with the rest of it. Okay. I'm going to keep these up. 
over there. And, uh, so, question, does yes. your project assume a theme as it comes along? Um, so for me, this is all about the key to the clock. <laughs> okay. Oh, with love, on, on with screen. love on the 18th. So that's what it means for me. So it's the key of love. Does it say Time, anything? Because you assemble it as the next question. Yes, yeah, so you're going to put journey on it, right? Yeah, I am going to put the journey, journey of love. Journey of love, journey to your heart. Yep, journey to time. Because you've got my um, birth date in there. I have. December the 18th. You must be talking about all the love for me. Of course, sis. Of course. So, now, if you've all got to this stage, you've stuck it down. Don't worry if you haven't. Carry on. All I'm going to do is going to give this a quick prime. Okay? Again, put it thicker in places, oh, thinner in places. Can you see this? Monica sent this. This is how far she is with her time. Oh, thank you, Monica. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. That's lovely. That's quite That's nice. Awesome. We haven't even thought about you all sharing your tags. Awesome. You can put those into your comments, and then I can see where you're all up to. Wow, that's fast. That's fast. Right behind you. So all I'm doing is putting in the primer. Just go over everything again. Oh, Paul's is on the 18th too. <laughs> oh yes, it is. It is. Uh, so oh, is Brad, just... so Brad Pitt's. Is it now? Brad Pitt is actually, his birthday is the same day as mine, December the 18th. Really? Yeah, it really? is, really. Oh, she loves Brad Pitt. She really does. I think she thinks she's the next Angelina Jolie or something. But there we go. So the 18th is very special. So, a happy birthday to Paul and Pip. Only special people are born. Why I picked the 18th, I don't know. I did another tag the other day and I picked the house number. Yeah. By coincidence. So maybe there's something to be said. I don't know. So I've just roughly gone in there and I've cut these. Do you know, I'm going to actually cut these bits off at the sides because they're bugging me. Because um, I don't like them. And when she says she's going to cut them, she isn't really going to cut them at all. She's just going to rip them off. Because they're sort of sticking out where I don't want them to stick out. So are you coming in with a little bit of white primer? No, I am. Um, no. Yes. Yes, I am. Okay, sorry. So let's just primer everything. So everybody, if you could go yeah, and primer it all. Oh, what a shame. So once you've done all of that and you're happy with that. Thanks, Monica. That's brilliant. I really love that sending a picture. Send yeah. through my messenger. Oh, you can send. I think you can send them probably on Facebook if any of you are joining us. Yeah, love to see what you guys have created. Just go ahead and post them. Yeah, post them on Dali Art Market or on Pip Art. Yeah. Um, and we'd love to see what you guys have been doing while I've been doing this. <laughs> Don't worry, because this is a learning curve for all of us. Every time I do it, I learn. So I'm just going to leave mine at that sort of level of white. Now some people would actually go to town and really make that white. And you could even leave it like this. I'm just going to say to you, if you really wanted like a shabby springy look, this, yep. I, you know, I don't know if you can see it the way I can see it. It actually looks really good because you didn't do what I would do, like do two layers of the gesso no. primer. So you've actually let the colors speak for themselves. So your gabardine on must have been like a, got a hint of green in it. It does, and I've left yeah, it as that. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I, it looks actually looks really good from where I'm sitting. Right oh, now. thank you, sis. Yeah, you you could leave it like this. You could, and you could add a tinge, maybe like a duck blue or something, or a Victorian pink. So I'm just going to quickly do it.
Okay, so I'm hoping that you've all caught up to the same stage as I'm at. And if you haven't, don't worry about it. All I'm doing is drying and primering that. Okay, is that okay, Pip? Sorry, what was that? Everything all right? Yes, everything's all right. Paul's asking for Monica's picture. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask Monica's permission first. <laughs> now, what I've got is a box here, which you can actually all see into before I cover all my laptop and I ruin everything, which I'm quite good at doing, by the way. Um, so what we'll do is we're just going to do a little bit of covering on my laptop so we don't ruin it. So you probably see me covering it. So there we go. So that just helps. So I've got a little box because Pip's made me put it in a box, by the way. There we go. I'm going to hold this for a while so you can all see this in its glory before it changes. Okay. Now, remember at the beginning I showed you two colours I was going to play with. Very different to my normal colour palette, but I wanted to show you. These are the two fabric misters. The reason I'm using the fabric misters, I'll be honest with you, is they're much thicker. They're much more vibrant because I've got a lot more pigment because obviously they're made for fabric, which means they're much more porous. Um, so the, the, the fabric is much more porous, so they need to be quite strong. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use these two colours. And I am randomly going to spray them onto my tag. I am not going to think about it. I am not going to worry about it. Now, if you've chosen to go with acrylic paints, what you need to do is get your water bottle. Either dilute your paints, dilute your paints down. This is just water. Dilute your paints down on a craft mat and splash them on or paint them on. Or you can put some of your acrylics, if it's a thinner acrylic, not a creamy, and then you can wash them down as well. So there's a couple of techniques and I can be show, show you that at a later date. So I'm actually going to go in with the blue. I've chosen the blue. Don't ask me why. So it's randomly. Great. You can see it in the box. It's perfect. Okay. So yeah. randomly. Nothing, think, don't think it. Just done three, whoops, just done three squirts. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, I'm going to quickly show you that. There you go. Three squirts. Look at that. That looks actually quite good like that. Oh, it's lovely, Daddy. There you go. Three squirts and we're away. Now, I'm going to do three more squirts. So you can either overlay it or you can just do it in the gaps. And you could have come in with acrylic paint if you don't yes. have. And just put the mister over it maybe to make it watery. Yeah, to you could do that. A close effect to that. Exactly. Now, have a look at that now. Can you see that? So that's what I'm doing. So I'm just building those colours up for you with those two colours. Looks good. Okay. It looks lovely. Thank you, sis. There we go. Let's take that up to the down. So I'm going to bring in a little bit more blue mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring in a little bit more yellow just so that we've got a little bit more going on in places. Don't worry if you think this is too dark or too light because we're going to come in, dry it all. I'm going to start to use some white primer. So let me put a little bit more yellow on. So obviously blue and blue and yellow make green. So you have to be aware of that, that, that you are going to get that colour. Now I mentioned to you I had a little bit of a white spritzer. Ooh, moving back. I'm going to use that after I've dried it. So my next step now. Now, is that, sorry, is that white? It's got like a pearlescent Yes, effect, it's a pearlescent. It? It's got mica in the bottom. Yeah. Ooh, sorry, it's got mica in the bottom. So it's more of a pearlescent. But you don't need to use another colour. Because I'm going to be using the Lazor as my last colour, which is this magenta. Hi, Danica. Hi. So let's get this out of the box for a second. And let's start drying this. So all get to your acrylic, get to your acrylic paint or your misters or your sprays or your whatever you're using. It could even be watercolours, it could be your pens, it could be whatever you like that you like to work with as a medium. Any colours, these are just the two colours I've chosen today. So what I'm doing is quickly drying this. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, um, yeah, we might, we might need it, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you've got any, any left, all you need to do is just take either a little bit of wipe or whatever you've got, or a little bit of your um, tissue paper, and then just lift anything, because I don't want to obviously stay all here just drying so that's really really important so now we've got to this stage can you see that so yummy. now you could leave it like this obviously but we need to get to we're going to do a little bit more on it today Ooh, keep moving it don't i for you there we go just gorgeous darling thank you sweetheart oh she's so good to me right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in with my little box because we don't want to hurt pip it doesn't want to hurt me, I think. That's more the case. Um, now, this is a mica base. So what I'm going to do is, I actually found a different technique. I'm actually taking the lid and the, and the top of the, the pet out. And I'm actually going to put my thumb and I'm going to give it a shake. Because what I'm finding is, is that wherever you have a mica, the problem you get is it does get stuck in the tube. So this way I've got a good mix on it. And all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add a little bit because I quite like... It doesn't matter, in fact, I've got enough in the, the lid. And again, this is going to give us some white, white bits. And if you think you've put too much somewhere or too little, don't worry about it. If you don't have this, don't worry. It's just, uh, it's just something I wanted to add to my project. Again, I'm going to dry that. I'll show you some of the bits that I've done there. Can you see that? You can see I've just done it on that rubbish on there. So again, quick dry. I'm hoping you're all keeping up. Or at least it's some use to you. <laughs> now, I could come in with my primer now and just white highlight the bits that I want to. However, even though I love this colour, I'm going to add a little bit of pink just to make it pop. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just take my Lizor and put it onto my mat. That's all I'm doing. And I'm going to take this little fan brush, which we seem to have got addicted to, me and, me and the girls, is just take it in and just do the edges. There's no rights and wrongs. Don't worry about anything. Now you don't need to add this, you can add this. I just think it adds a little bit more colour. Don't worry, we're going to still work on this so it's not going to sit like it is at the moment. But it's just on the edges. So. You know, we want to just bring a little bit, not too much, because I don't want to take away from the colours I've already done. And I'm just doing it right again, very random, very, very randomly. Now, you can add any colours you like to these projects, but I just like the fact that I can do. So, that's where we're going to get. I'm going to leave it, finish this bit off. And leave it at that. Now you could do your splashes in this. You could do your... And leave them as it is. There we go. If you feel you want to add any of the other colours back in again, then obviously do so um, at this stage. So can I just show you that where I've got to with that now? There we go. So you can see a little bit of pink in there now, not too much. Again, a quick blast of dry. Definitely, definitely, for sure. 
So what I've got here is all of this stuck down now nicely. And what I'm going to start doing is, this is where the magic happens, I always say, take a dry brush. I've just got a nice big fluffy one. Dolly, you did my colours. My These are your colours. Oh, oh no. So it's, it's for like your birthday. You. It's for your birthday, remember. So all I'm going to do is come in and start to lighten it. Not a lot, but just enough to bring pull all this out. So what you want to do is you want it to catch just in bits, not everywhere, but just catch. And again, I'm just using a big brush and I'm just going for it. If you find things are, you know, slightly moving because your glue wasn't dry or you've heat gunned it and you've come back, that's all you have to do is just come in, just take a little bit. On the edges of main things is a good one, I find. Ooh. Gorgeous when you come in with the white. Um... Yeah, so this flower is metal, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to stick this down. I can see now why you said that white primer was so important. Yes, so you use the main focal point of your project, really. Now, I don't know if you can all see this, but you can see where we're going with this. I'm just, I'm not thinking it, I'm not thinking about it, and I think that's where the difference is. The more you think about it, the harder it becomes. Let's put that little flower back in again. So that sometimes happens to heat the glue. So can you see where I'm going with this? Obviously, we can carry on till everybody comes. It's here. So I'm hoping this gives you some idea. We will be posting pictures of it. Hopefully, I'm holding it still enough for you. So it's just such a, a lovely, I was going to say, simple but effective way of doing mixed media and i'm hoping i've given you some inspiration today to that so the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm actually going to leave mine there and i could carry on and on and on um, and what i'm going to do is i do a little bit of gold on the edges with the wax it looks lovely, darling. oh thank you Han. so just bring in some wax on the edges of stuff just to give it a little bit more because what will happen is the wax will actually pick the texture up of anything you've got there so anything you've got which is raised or got a little bit of texture on it I mean I can't I don't know if you can pick it up as well as I can here but I am you know the colors the, the texture is just unbelievable I'm gonna try and give you a picture a little bit closer so I can show you I mean obviously I've got a little bit of a way to go on this I'll probably finish it off with a little bit more. Yeah, and then we can post pictures of the finish. Exactly. Mark. So now can you see how that key looks? How all of those different bits that with threads, the numbers, a little bit of a metal, a bit of a gabachon. Sorry, the colours that you die for. Thank you, sweetheart. It's slightly different to what I've done. So you've got a bit of purple going on in there. You've got a bit of blue going on in there. You've got a bit of green. But just look at all of that. If you can see this corner, look at that. The richness of it and the depth of it. And hopefully, that's you know, what I'm gonna do just to show you the last bit that I would probably do is I want to bring a little bit of that pink out, and what I'm gonna do is probably take something that is a little bit pinky and just throw a little bit of gems and stuff into this, just all bits of blue. So I'll just show you that quickly. I won't do it all. So Yes, well, thank you for reminding me, sis. I'm not going to stick these all down because I'm going to, I want, I need it to dry. But all I've got is a few sequences. So if you want to, you can sort of stick a few sequences down, just random. Now, obviously, the journey is still very white. So what I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the pink, just a tiny, weeny bit. I'm just going to use my little baby white. And I'm just going to splodge that pink on. So, because what we don't want is we don't want full coverage. Take a little bit of the yellow and do exactly the same. So, there we go. Nothing much, but what it will do is it will give you the tag will now match the background totally without you actually having to do anything. Oops, that's a lot of blue. So, what I can do is just take the tag. And just do the edges in it now. Don't want to waste anything, do we? 
now and then if you want to go in a little bit with the glue so what you can do is now what will happen is when you actually add this tag it won't stand out like a sore thumb right i want to leave it at that today and hopefully you can see all the little sequences the word journey how it's blended i'm going to stick all that down for you because i know i've kept you for a long long time today <laughs> But I'm hoping you enjoyed it. Deborah said she loves the colours. Thank you. So can you see all of that? Oh, you coloured your journey in too while yeah. I was typing away here. So I used the little uh, bits of colour that we had and I used a baby wipe. Obviously I'll add a little bit more to this here. But that's the gist of it. No. Oh, hello everybody. I'm still here. So still there. there you go. It's absolutely then, gorgeous, isn't I'm it? Stuck it all, do you want me yeah. to hold it up for you? Yeah, it's Because I like stuck. to hold it up because I like to the do journey might fall. Yeah, because we've still got to glue this down. But let me do it slowly. Just the last Jelly, bit. have a look at it. Now you oh, can see it. Look how gorgeous beautiful. that is. Ooh, that's our little do you know you just created that right now? Yeah. So isn't that thank absolutely you everybody. gorgeous? So that just gives you a really, really good idea of where we're going with it. Paul, this one's for you. It's got the 18th written on it. It's about your journey being in isolation. <laughs> oh. I'm so mean. Happy birthday. Yeah. So what do you think, guys? That was quick. That was fast. Um, let us know if you enjoyed this. We would love to do more of these. But I think it would be great if we could do like a virtual online uh, workshop that you just come join yeah. and watch what we're creating and we can tell you again a list of bits and bobs or you can just do it out of your craft room and because we'll be able to hear everybody and see everybody and each other and talk with each other it means we'll all know what stage we're at so we can go slower faster and just keep up with each other in general Definitely. and, and we'll get inspired too of course, because you guys are you. so creative but there you have it Thank you, everyone. You did amazing. So thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining it's us. Thank gorgeous. you for watching us. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to talk about it. Um, don't forget to show us what you've made. We love you. We miss you. And we're really looking forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Yeah. And we will drop on Facebook when we're looking at doing a scheduled uh, virtual workshop. And what we might even do is we may even make some special papers just for you to download and for you to follow us on a journal be page a great journey. Idea. So it'll be an exclusive journal page that Dali's probably created um, and designed, and then you can just download it, and then we can uh, all craft together. Definitely, for sure. Okay, so stay safe. That's awesome. Yeah, it's stay tea time safe. for us because I know and Mom went upstairs to make tea for us. <laughs> take care of each other. Happy crafting. We love you. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sis. You're welcome.